Hey, welcome to the Event Answer Studio. Today I want to show you how to create this simple and beautiful circle backdrop. Plus, I'll walk you step by step through the process of creating your own floral arrangement to go on top. To start off, we need a circle backdrop stand to build our design on top of. Now these backdrops come in lots of different sizes, and the one I'm using today is 6 feet wide, and including the feet, it stands 6.5 feet tall. Now across the top of this circle, I'm going to add a string of curtain lights, and each strand in this curtain is currently tied into bundles to keep it from becoming a tangled mess. I plugged in the lights to ensure that they're all working, and then I'm going to take a spring clamp to temporarily hold my first and last strand of my curtain to the widest parts of my circle arch. Then I'm going to align the center of the curtain with the top center of my arch so that all of my lights are evenly distributed across the top. Now I'm going to secure the lights in place using some clear packaging tape. It's easy to use and blends in perfectly with the stand. Now it's important to note that my curtain lights are actually longer than the top half of my circle arch, which means I can't just tape the center and then pull the string tight along the arch, otherwise I'll end up with a large grouping of lights right at the edges of my circle. So I actually attach my lights in sections, finding the center point of my lights and the center point of that section of the circle, and then taping them in place. Now this is a lot of extra work, but I really wanted my lights to be evenly distributed across the arch. To help hide the light cord that's attached to the stand, I'm putting pieces of tape between each of the strands and then one more piece of tape at the top of each of those light strands so that they don't sag down below the edge of the frame, giving us a nice clean look. Now once I've got the entire light strand attached to the back of the arch, we also need to secure the power cord in place so it's not just dangling from the edge of our arch. I taped it along the lower half of the circle and then down one of the support feet. I helped it to secure all the wires to one side of the arch and not on top, and that's because this is actually the back side of my stand, I'm just going to rotate it up against the wall so you can't see any of those wires. Now because I'm using pipe and drape, I'm going to tuck all those extra cords underneath of it, and we'll have a nice clean look at the base of our stand. Now that the backdrop's in its final location, I'm going to untie each of the light strands and gently lower them to the floor, as if you just let them go, they can still get tangled at this point. On top of everything we've created so far, I'm going to drape this white organza window scarf that's 18 feet long. And out of the packaging, they're quite wrinkly. Now I usually just throw something like this into the dryer and that'll get all the wrinkles out, but that did not work with these organza pieces. So as much as I hate ironing, I busted it out and pressed the entire piece, and that'll give it a beautiful professional look when we hang this on top of our stand. Today I'll be draping the fabric in an asymmetrical design, so I'm going to pull about a foot of fabric just in front of the left hand side of my circle, and then I'm going to spread that fabric out so the top edge of that fabric is sitting at about 11 o'clock if this were a clock face. Now I'm going to temporarily hold that in place with a spring clamp so it doesn't just slide off the edge of our circle. Moving to the right side of the frame, I'm going to gather up the remaining fabric and hold it on the frame at about 2 o'clock. Then I'm going to pull that fabric back over to to the left side loosening it up so I get a nice draping action and then bring that tail in front of the frame and clamp it temporarily in place. Now I want to make sure the ends of my fabric are evenly distributed on the floor. So about a foot of fabric should be sitting on both the left and the right side. If it's not the case, this is the time to adjust that by undoing the spring clamps and moving the fabric around. Now let's focus on the drape behind the arch. I'm going to pull the top edge of the fabric tighter so it creates a straight line across the top and then I'm going to fold the fabric back and forth on top of my fingers creating these beautiful folds down the width of my fabric. Then along the bottom edge of the fabric I'm going to pull it back out of my hand so it creates a nice curve and this will give us that really beautiful draped effect. Once I'm happy with the placement of the fabric, I'm then going to take a white zip tie and snugly secure it to the frame, making sure that I rotate the tail end of that zip tie to the back of the frame and then cut off any remaining tail with either a pair of scissors or wire cutters. On the left side of the frame, I'm going to secure the fabric using a little bit of that clear packaging tape by simply putting one piece over the top edge of the fabric, making sure it secures to the frame. Right now, this side of the fabric is just hanging straight down, but I want to give it a little extra texture by putting gathers in it. And to hold those gathers in place, I'm going to slip a couple pieces of rolled up tape under the fabric and set it right on the top edge of the frame, and then press the fabric down into the tape, and this will hold the gathers exactly where I want them. Now it's time to create the focal point of this design, which is the floral arrangement. 
I'm using four different kinds of faux greenery as well as these white nooseskays as the center point. I'm going to go over every floral piece and remove the price tags and then spread apart all the different florals and leaves so that they're nice and airy. When these are purchased in store, they can really get cramped together and squished in their boxes. So we need to aerate them so they can be really voluminous in our design and it gives them a more organic look. So for instance, the eucalyptus I'm using every branch that I bought looks the same. So by bending it in different ways, they'll all look a bit more natural. Now we need to create a structure to build our floral design on top of. I'm gonna use some chicken wire and cut a 12 by 12 inch square out of it using some wire snippers. Now this square does not need to be super perfect, so just get a rough cutout because we're gonna take this square and turn it into a chicken wire burrito. So take one edge and fold it in so it's right in the center of your roll and then continue to roll it up until you get to the other end and you create this long tube with a little bit of chicken wire going down the center of it. Now this does not need to be perfect because it won't be seen. We just need those different wires going all directions to thread our floral stems right into. Then I'm going to attach the chicken wire to the top right section of our circle frame using a couple zip ties. We want to make sure this is nice and snug on the front side of our frame. Starting with my tallest pieces of greenery, I'm going to work from the back of the display towards the front. Now take the end of each stem and weave it in and out of the chicken wire. The tension between the stem and the chicken wire is what will hold the greenery in place. This is especially important whenever the greenery is pointing down as gravity is wanting to pull it out of our structure. So as you add your greenery, really get it in between those wires so that it's nice and tight. I specifically chose these two types of eucalyptus for their long stems. That will allow me to create a large arrangement out of a relatively small structural piece. To fill out the middle section of my design, I've chosen two different varieties of leafy bushes and these will give me a lot of volume and texture inside the design. I'm loosely mirroring the left and the right side of each other, so every time I add one plant to one side, I'm also adding it to the other side. As I continue to build up the greenery, I want to make sure I'm intermixing the different types of greenery so I don't have just large clumps of a singular type. And this gives me a beautiful blend of textures and colors inside all that greenery. Now once I've got most of the greenery in place, I'm going to grab my white nooseskays and put them right in the center. I'll use those to cover up the mechanics of the stems and the chicken wire that you could still see in the middle. At this point, I'm going to take a step back and look at the design from several feet away and judge if I need to add any extra greenery to fill in holes or adjust the placement of exact flowers and leaves because the beauty of using faux florals means we can bend stems, we can push flowers where they exactly need to be, and we don't have to worry about bruising or breaking them like we would if we were using real flowers. And now this gorgeous, simple white and green backdrop is ready for your special event. If you enjoyed today's video, you should check out this one. Until the next time, remember, stay creative everyone!